Hello and welcome to my tutorial series for my new template collection for Adobe InDesign CS4, CS5, and CS6. For these tutorials I'll be working in CS6 and there are six tutorials in this series. This is the first one getting started with the InDesign workspace. There are a few panels you should have open in order to edit these templates. The control panel, which is here at the top, the tools panel over here on the left, swatches, stroke, character, links, layers, and pages. Now the pages panel is the most important one to have open and it's one of the best features about Adobe InDesign that sets it apart from Photoshop. Because you're going to be working um, with multiple pages in some of these layouts, in Photoshop you'll notice that if you want to work on a multi-page document you have to open up a bunch of different files. In InDesign you can have one file open with multiple pages and if you just double click on each one of these little icons that for page 1 and page 2 you can navigate very easily through that pages panel. You can also just scroll through them up and down with your mouse. <clears throat> Another feature about my templates um, that you'll notice in, in, in Adobe InDesign is that I'll have bleeds on all of my documents. This is for um, any sort of graphics or backgrounds that you want to have come over the edge of the paper. Let me zoom in a little closer to these guides so you can see them. The red one indicates the bleed area, the black indicates where the page actually gets trimmed off, and this magenta one is your safe area. Let me zoom back out. <clears throat> the safe area is where you want to keep all of your text. I also have an, another guide here which I set about a quarter of an inch from my graphic frame to show and center the text for this particular template and keep it within this safe area. I have quite a few text frames here. This is the headline, um, some body copy, and a little disclaimer, which we'll get to later. If you'll notice, if you click on one of these text frames, I have these little white squares on the corner and sides. These are the handles of a text frame, and you can click and drag them um, out and make them a little bit larger. Um, you're, this is going to be essential when you're changing font sizes, particularly, because if you select this text for gift voucher, and you change the font, and I'm just going to demonstrate that very quickly here. <clears throat> Most of that, or half of that text just disappeared. If I grab um, the side of my text frame or even a corner and just pull it out, I can see all of that text. And then we can also reduce the size of that, but I'll get to that in another tutorial. Let's go back to the um, original template. Okay, another thing that we're going to have in here are graphic frames. And these are the what are you're going to be putting your, um, or placing your images. Um, this also has uh, handles on the very cor on the corners of each of the um, graphic frames as well as the sides, and you can pull those out and make them larger um, or make them smaller if you want to. Um, but if you if you pull them in or out without using the shift key, it's going to um, make a different shape of that square. So if you hold down a shift key and bring it in, you can um, reduce the size or increase it proportionally to the original size of that text of that graphic frame. Um, also, if you move your um, mouse into that graphic frame, an icon will appear. It looks like a little donut. This is a content grabber tool. And you can select specifically the content within inside a graphic frame and move it around. And you'll see that it's getting cut off as they move it around. This works really similar to the um, layer mask in Photoshop, whereas if I move it around, it becomes it just disappears on the outside of this graphic frame. Your graphic is still there. It's just hiding inside this graphic frame. And you can also increase the size of that image if you want it to bleed out to the edge of your graphic frame. Just um, go ahead and select the image and in these little handles of the graphic that's inside the graphic frame, hold down your shift key and pull it out. And we can increase the size of our images in the graphic frame. But I'll go through that in a little more detail once we get to the tutorial about placing images and graphics in your templates. Um, another thing that we're going to be using a lot while we're going through these um, tutorials is zooming in and out. Um, one way to do it on your keyboard shortcut is hitting um, Command minus on a Mac. And I believe it's Control minus and Control plus on a PC, but don't quote me on that because it's been a while since I worked on the PC. Um, you can also go to the View menu and go to Zoom In, and you'll have to hit that a couple of times incrementally. Um, to zoom in and again to zoom out. You'll have to go back and click it view to zoom out and view to zoom in. And again that keyboard shortcut is command minus to zoom out and command plus to zoom in. Okay, we're also, I'm going to hit command zero and that's going to bring us back to um, 
the entire uh, document in the um, screen. And I'm going to command minus to zoom out a little bit. Another thing is um, switching your um, view mode to preview and normal. Right now I have it in normal view and you can see the guides and the bleeds. If I go to view to screen mode to preview, I can get an idea of what my document's going to look like once the bleeds are trimmed off of my document. And you also hide the guides at the same time and it grays out this whole area that was once white. If I go back up to view to screen mode to normal, I can see my guides and my bleeds again. Um, also, with these uh, templates, I'm not going to be including the fonts um, because they are copyrighted, but you can, however, purchase them Purchase them from a website called fonts.com, and there's a couple other foundries like my fonts and um, some other free ones where you can find some fonts, but the ones I used in, my, in this particular template and a few others, um, it's called Bickley, sorry, Bickham Script Pro and Minion Pro Regular. If I go over to um, the internet and I go to fonts.com, I can purchase uh, Bickley, Bickham Script Pro for $35 and Minion Regular also for $35 and Minion Italic, which I also use. Um, those are two separate fonts for Minion. There is an entire font family for Minion, but it's like $1,000 and you want to make sure that you're selecting just the fonts you need. If you're on a Mac, there is a program called um, the Fonts Book. And if you launch that program, you can install your fonts by going to File to um, Add Fonts, locate the fonts you downloaded or purchased, and um, your fonts will be loaded and you can start working on those templates. If you want to change your fonts um, from the ones I have, um, from the templates and use whatever you have, I'll, go, um, I'll talk more about that in another tutorial on editing text. Okay, and that concludes our first tutorial on getting started with the Adobe InDesign interface. Let's um, move on over to the next tutorial, which is placing images and graphics.